Now we take you back to the night of January 25th, 2002, on Art Bell, Somewhere in Time. Let us begin where we left off last night. I uh, The story was getting so interesting that I asked the gentleman last night, that would be Ken, to uh, you know email me and give me some contact information, and he did. And so here is my last caller from last night, Ken. Hello, Ken. Hi, Art. How are you tonight? I'm all right. I'm, I'm really happy you decided to, to come back on with me uh, tonight, and I appreciate your taking the time to do that. No problem. Uh, let us begin uh, as we did last night. You have the luxury now of a little more time, and you, you can tell us uh, in a little more detail exactly what happened. Exactly what happened. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, uh, New Year's Eve of 2000, um, we moved into this house. And uh, where where are you? Ken? I'm okay. I'm out of Portland, Oregon. Right. And the house that we moved into is oh god, it's was built in 1910. Hmm. So it's it's a fairly old home. Right. And uh, from day one, um, Sherry, my girlfriend, she just something about the place wasn't right to her. You know, she just felt that there was something that was off there. Was this a fixer upper that kind of deal? It was what well, was a rental, and oh. it was through a friend that they weren't going to rent it, but I needed a place, and they said, sure, you know. It had been sitting vacant for like six months, I guess, <laughs> six to eight months. Later, we came to find out that the gal that lived there before just up and left. Um, the way you ultimately had to. Exactly. And since then, we found out some other stuff, too. But okay, but let's not jump right. ahead. Uh, go to right. the beginning. You moved into the house. Yeah. Uh, lucky to get in. Sherry didn't much like it. But, it was, you know, a little work and fix it up some, you know, it might you know come around, you know, feel mm. a little better. Right. Well, she's kind of like, a, she's able to really pick up on stuff. You know, mm-hmm. sees things that other people don't see, you know, or feel stuff. You know, she's really in tune with what's going on around her a lot more than I am until now. <laughs> but, uh. In other words, you would have described yourself as what? Kind of skeptical of. Yeah, this very sort of skeptical. Thing? Okay. You know? All right, good. And, uh. So, you know, it started off with she said that she'd seen, like, angels around the house. Angels? Yeah. You know, which I thought, you know, I was kind of odd. And she says, well, it's a good thing, you know. And, okay, so i never seen him. And, but she said there was always just one out by this tree. And then he'd be in this other room. She had this thing about being in the kitchen all the time. That she felt safe there. Didn't like being in any other, other rooms in the house, mm. especially the front room area. Yeah, rooms can have a feel to them. Mm-hmm. Sure. And um, so this went on. And um, it was kind of funny because every now and then, like, sometimes I'd fall asleep on the couch and I'd be woke up to, like, uh, somebody whispering in your ear, you know, like, really weird, kind of, yes. like, saying something that was like, you know, like, leave me alone, you know, I'm trying to sleep and look and there's nobody there. Uh-huh. So, okay. you know, I just kind of, like, oh, I was dreaming, you know, I just passed right. it off. Right. And uh, then there were several times I'd be uh, sitting in the front room by myself, and maybe the kids might be upstairs, and and uh, she was at work. I'd be playing a you know video game or something, just kind of biding some time. And you get that feeling that somebody's walking up behind you, like you can hear the floor kind of squeak, you know, and you turn around and there's nobody there. Oh. So this would happen off and on, you know. It wasn't, you know, it's just kind of like okay, you know. My imagination running rapid never really put anything together. So a little bit later, then we started hearing the little girl laughter. You know, this is you know a couple of months of being there. I most of the time when I heard it, I would be upstairs in the bathroom, and it was like right outside the door. But nobody'd be there at the house. It only happened when nobody was there. Do you your children? Do you have a little girl? I have a, an 11-year-old daughter and a 12-year-old son. Ah. 
No, uh, no, really, little girls. No, no, you know, this is you know younger than what they would be, and it's just like little laughter, like he was playing with a friend. Or just something. outside your door. Right outside the bathroom door, yeah. Audible, loud, just like you would hear it if uh, there was a little girl. Right? Exactly. Uh, okay. My kids were right there in the house. You know? All righty. I'd be the only one in there. Right. And then, like, sure, he would see shadows move all the time in the house. You know, like, oh, there it goes. You know, it was in, in the front room, but I wouldn't see it. Well, then I started, after a while, catching out of the corner of my eye, seeing something move. I, um, sometimes in the bathroom upstairs, there was a mirror on the back wall, and if you had the medicine cabinet open, you could see right into the hallway when I was shaving. Right. Now, this one particular day, I'm in there shaving, and I see this go from my room into my son's room. See what go? A uh, shadow figure, something black, uh, four feet in height, you know, like a the, you know a kid or something like that. Small. Yeah. So okay. right after that, my son comes running up the stairs, and I say, you know, hey Brandon, is there somebody with you? And he's like, no, nope, by myself. And I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. just must be seeing things again, you know. So this kind of keeps going on, and then uh, it was kind of odd because that's first summer there in the house the house is real drafty i mean it's you know really old it's not insulated well it's you know 90 degrees out in the summertime and when we come home from work you'd have to go around and open up all the doors to let the heat in because it was so cold in the house that you'd have to wear a coat right you know and it's like this this there's something not right sherry kept bringing that up and i'm like oh we got the shade of the trees you know you know skeptics they try to you know make (laughs) reason out of anything Yes, of course. The brain struggles to do that. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Which, which I did all the time. And um, so this went along, and then her uh, then went through that winter, and it was there was just some some more activity going on. And uh, then her son come to live with us. He was living out of state and come up and. The first night that he was there, we were talking about, you know, what he's been doing and what's going on. And so we went up to bed, and uh, he slept down there, downstairs in the front room on the couch. I don't know what time was it, about probably 11, 11.30 like that. Sherry gets woke up by this, my son's radio in his room blasting. You know, it's like, why did he set his alarm, you know, mm-hmm. get up? So she gets up, goes walking in there, and it's just blasting loud. And she's shaking him, trying to wake him up, and he won't wake up. Mm-hmm. And the radio, which he normally has, like, on all these but goodies and stuff, is saying over and over again, time to kill, time to kill, which just freaks her out. Time to kill? Yes. So she rips the cord out of the wall, turning the radio off, walks out of the room, and there's Greg is sitting at the top of the stairs, just white as a ghost, looking at her. And he goes... I am not sleeping down there by myself. Can I sleep in your room? Because something has just pinned me on the couch. Uh, Ken, hold on. We're uh, here at the bottom of the hour. There's more more to this. He was the last caller last night. You didn't get to hear all of this tonight. You are. I'm Art Bell. This is Coast to Coast AM. All right. Uh, uh, back now to... Uh uh, to Ken. Uh, Ken, you know, if, somebody, if I had encountered a radio blaring out time to kill my child's room, hey, um, that would be when I'd pack up and haul butt. And that's what some people on uh, Fast Blaster are saying here. It would be time to go. Uh-huh. Which is, that's one of the things that we were, have been discussing between ourselves and what was going on. Because something would happen like that yes. or something else. And it seemed like within 15 to 20 minutes' time that it was like you never even knew it happened. Like there was some type of control, manipulation, whatever it was, or the power that this thing had. Now, by that, do you mean you didn't remember the event, or do you do you mean the event just didn't seem... It would just seem like everything just went passive on it. You know, like, like there, was, there was really nothing going on, you know. It was in the back... Okay. You know, it was like something would, would push everything to the back of your mind. Okay. I mean, even the stuff that happened to Sherry that, you know, I mean, she would be traumatized. And it was within two or three hours, we were back to doing our normal daily routine. Yeah, I guess that's really the way life is. 
I've had a lot of traumatic events in my life, and they do pass, and, you know, life does go on, as the old saying goes, and so, yeah, I understand. Okay. And, you know, time and time again, we talked about getting out of there, you know, but it just, it, it wouldn't, you know, there, we'd make up excuses about stuff or, or something, or, you know, it didn't seem so bad. Yeah, you know, or Sherry would try to leave, like, that's it, I've got to get out of here, and I would talk to her, and she would end up staying. Right. You know? And, and it wasn't until after we were out of there that we were able to really start putting the pieces together. Well, after this business with the radio, what then? How bad did okay. it get? I mean, last night you mentioned that Sherry was physically attacked by yes, something. She, she was. And actually, the first time was just prior to Greg's attack. It was just before he came. It was like a week earlier. And so I kind of screwed up on my timeline there. But... Um, if she was attacked, we just thought that, well, we won't say nothing to him. She was attacked how? Um, she was sleeping in the bed upstairs and was awoke out of the, the sleep being pinned with her face down. She was laying on her stomach with her face stuffed into the pillow and just being pushed into the bed. You know, she couldn't even, you know, she was able to get her head turned around and there was nobody there. And she was just being held down. You know, and it was like... By a completely unseen force of some kind. Exactly. You know, couldn't see it, but could feel it. All right. Now, Ken, it's not that I doubt what you're saying. Right. But if you would be willing to put Sherry on for a moment, this might be a time when she should describe what happened to her. Okay. Is it... If she's willing. Here she is. Okay. Hello? Hi, Sherry. Hi. Uh... Thank you, first of all, for coming on. I really appreciate it. Uh, but Ken was just beginning to tell me about being pinned down or something in bed, and I thought I ought to hear this from you. Yes. Yeah, I was sleeping, and um, I just woke up to my face being shoved into the pillow. My body was totally paralyzed. I couldn't move. And it was a terrific amount of weight that was laying on top of me. Did it, did it feel like a body? It or felt like a, a body. Or not a blunt weight, but a body. A body. Yes, definitely. Okay. And I had other occasions where it would just come in and just touch my leg. And you could actually see the comforter indent. With, uh, you couldn't see anything there, but you could feel it and you could see the comforter move. Uh, and at times it would tuck you in just like you were a child. Not hurt you, just tuck your comforter all the way around you. It was really, it was terrifying. And it got to, after that happened, I refused to go to bed by myself. I refused to go to any room but the kitchen. I just sat in the kitchen for almost two years straight. Oh, my God. This went on for t how? Two years. Mm -hmm. For two years? Two years. Um, is it over now? No. I I hope it is. We've um, we're Christians and we've been going to church and we've had people praying for us and we moved into this house which has it's a brand new home and nobody's lived here and our first night here by ourselves I was just rolling over to put my arm around Ken and this hor horrible laugh like. It was in a tunnel, but it was right up above us, and it was so, really... So, whatever okay. this is, it has followed you. It sure seems like it. So, it's not even over now. Uh -uh. It, it may be there now. It could be. I haven't felt anything. Have you been... Uh, have you had physical marks, bruises from I've any... I've had a bite a on, on my back, in the middle of my back from it. A bite on your back? Mm-hmm. Teeth marks? Teeth marks. It took six weeks for it to heal. Oh my God! When did how did this happen? It was I was just up in the bedroom and it was just ow, you know. You mean just you were standing, laying down in bed? What? I was standing in in the bedroom, and it was just a, an you know just pain in my back, and so I went downstairs and had Ken lift my shirt up to look at my back, and right. there there it was. And there's a bite mark. Mm -hmm. That takes six weeks to heal? It took six weeks, and he kept putting peroxide, and it, you know, it was quite something. Um, you know, I asked Ken, and I'll ask you too, uh, and maybe, maybe you'll have the same answer, but after going in to your son's room and hearing a radio blaring, time to kill, time to kill, uh-huh, 
Most people would be so out of there, Sherry. Oh, I've tried. I was so terrified. I was so scared. And yet it was there was some kind of a, a power that um, took over. And Ken was such a skeptic, even though he was hearing the things that were happening. You know, right. he said, well, nothing happens when you're with me. I take it you were not uh, as much of a skeptic. I was it. not. Uh, well, I'd never had anything like this ever happen to me before. And I didn't know what it was, but I really believed that I knew I wasn't crazy, and I knew this stuff was really happening to Well, me. what about your children? Well, um, we kept it quiet. We did, they're very young, and we didn't want to frighten them, but we asked questions to make sure that nothing was hurting them. So they really weren't being affected? Oh, okay, so they weren't being affected particularly? No. But my, my children, my oldest one's 26, and my younger one is 22nd. 22, and um, they both had incidents with it, too. Oh. And uh, the 22-year-old is the one that came into our room and slept on the floor that night that he was pinned. But he had absolutely no clue, because I never mentioned this to him at all until that night when he was attacked and we told him what had been happening. Well, it, it sounds like sometimes it was, uh, you say, it tucked you in, for example. Yeah. So that almost seems benign. That almost seems friendly. Well, as the story goes, I thought there was just one thing there. But after um, the end of the story, you'll hear that there might have been several more. Okay, but everything Ken's been telling us is basically the way you remember it, too. Oh, yeah. And, and even down to the point where after these things would occur, like the radio and the rest of it, we stayed. Uh, it would sort of fade from your mind in a way that lessened the importance of what had just happened in some way, causing you to stay? No. I would have anxiety even. I didn't want to go back to the house. I tried to stay away. We were um, bike riders. and we. So it didn't fade as much for you? Yeah. It didn't fade as much for me. It was, I was terrified. Well, do you have any sense, any idea of why you thought the kitchen was a safe place? I didn't have the feeling of, um, I mean, any other room, it was just uh, like it just go up your spine. You could just feel it like breathing on you. And All of that was not present in the kitchen? And it wasn't in the kitchen. So you spent a lot of time in the kitchen, huh? I spent... Two years of my... I, I wouldn't go watch TV even. I couldn't sit in the living room at all, which would aggravate the family. But I wasn't... I was that uncomfortable. I could not sit in any room but the kitchen. And then I would stay up and wait until Ken would go to bed at night because I would not go up and sleep in that bedroom by myself. God, that's like some kind of prison. It was. For you. It was a prison to me. It was really horrible. Okay, well, I, I, I may ask you to come back. I, I okay. don't know, but I, I just I wanted to hear your words, and, and I just have. Um, you can remember as plainly as day that radio blaring out. Uh, I can remember every, everything just as if I'm standing there. Yep, everything is very clear. Okay, let me talk once again to uh, Ken, if I could, please. Okay. Hello? Hi, Ken. Howdy. Okay, so I guess we haven't even uh, heard it all yet? No. <laughs> There's more. Okay. So, oh, great, the phone's going to start going. Yeah, go up and get the other phone. Um, let's see, where are we? Um, after Greg had been pinned, um, there was a time he went out one night. We were setting up, and... Um, was talking in bed, and we heard the door downstairs shut, and we heard girl laughter, and we thought, oh, Greg's home, and brought some friends with him. So she gets up, Sherry goes downstairs, comes running back up there, there's nobody there, which there was nobody there. He never came home that night. And uh, so just little things like that kept going on until um, he had a girlfriend move in with him, and um, Jamie started encountering... It sounds like you're getting ready to change telephones here or something. Yes, I am. All right, well, that's not a problem. Um, you know, I mean, here's your wife almost not willing to come out of the kitchen. Um, how were you handling that? 
Hello? Yes, hi. Hold on a second. Let me turn this volume up. There's one on it. Where is it at? Okay, you're on some other phone now. Oh, this is great. <laughs> Are you there? Yes. Uh huh. I'm here. I'm trying to get this volume on this phone to. Can you hear me? Can you hold on for just a second? Sure, sure. Sounds like we are having technical difficulties. I got a phone problem. Yeah, I, I can tell. Oh, great. I'm 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 hearing you all right. And, oh, and, there we go. And by the way, you need to turn the radio off in the background if you can. Okay, she's downstairs with the other phone. She must have just hung it up. Okay. All right, sounds good. Now, yeah, here we go. I, what, I, what I asked you, I'm going to ask you again now, Ken. Okay. You've got a, a girlfriend who is spending almost every day for two years in her kitchen. Right. How How did you handle that? Very difficultly. Um, you know, I, I sat in there with her most of the time and stuff. It was like we knew that we needed to move, but we didn't have the funds available to. We were just getting by at the time. Right. What, I, what kind of work do you do? I'm a mechanic. You're a mechanic. And uh, does your girlfriend also work? Um, she was laid off at the time. So, okay. you know, so she was home all the time. Right. Uh-huh. But she would try to stay gone, you know, during the daytime if, if I wasn't there. But as, uh, yes, I understand. As a skeptic, um, what did you think was going on? I mean, did you think that she was having problems or had you seen enough of this so you knew she wasn't having problems. It's just that y'all had a problem. Well, that's kind. That's kind of it. You know, it was. It was like. You don't have to answer any of these. I'm just. I'm trying to get to the bottom of how you reacted. Right. Well, I started getting really frustrated about it. Is how I was ended up reacting, which is it's kind of weird because since we've gotten out of there and we've been sitting there talking about it, it's like, you know, I knew what was going on, but. Something wasn't letting me deal with it the way that I should have. Uh huh. You know, it was like there was some whatever it is that's there. It has an agenda. It's got a plan of something that it wants to happen. Did I you mean, ever get an idea of what you think that was? Um, I don't know. We've talked to a few people. Um, there's one guy in particular that I've, I've really done a lot of talking with. That he's uh, done a lot of ghost research and on properties. Um, um, anyway, he's he does a lot of research on the back on the history, uh, like you know a, a place where that's haunted. Right. And he'll get the history all the way back to the original landowners. Right. And try to find out what's happened on that property. So, what do you know about that house? Um, that's the thing we've been having a little problem trying to find. Yeah, I, I need to get a hold of historical society to get the original back stuff of what's going on. All right. But I did find out that there was a family that lived in the house 20 years earlier that in the middle of the night left and never came back, left everything behind, food, clothes, toys, everything, furniture. They just left? They just left. Strong hint there, Ken. Mm-hmm. So we didn't, know, we didn't find that out until after we were out. Gotcha. Okay. You know, and it's like, whoa, you know, we start, you know, because I'm really trying to research this stuff and talking to people and... And come to find out that there's several houses in the area there that have hauntings all the time. As a skeptic, uh, when uh, your wife pulled up her blouse or whatever and you saw a bite mark on her back, um, how'd you react to that? It was like, how in the hell did that get there, you know? I mean, I knew she didn't have it earlier, so it's kind of like... In other words, at what point did your skepticism fall away to, uh, I suppose, terror? That would be the morning that I seen it. It? This dark, small, whatever. Yes. um, It's a week's time that is just built up into this chaotic frenzy of us bailing. In a very rapid fashion. When you left the house, right? Right. Okay, so um, it, it got suddenly much worse. It did. Um, Greg and Jamie had moved out, and that was the point where it started getting worse. They moved over to uh, eastern Oregon, and uh-huh. they're, they're over there now. Okay. And um, 
after he had left, the activity started picking up. So um, this one friend of ours, she come over and had like some ideas on how to get rid of, you know, the ghost in the house or whatever it was. Right. And was trying that, you know, and it's like Sherry's going, this she's pissing it off, <laughs> you know, she's really making this thing agitated. And, what what was she doing? Uh, um, there reli- was religious sorts so of things. We had or? we had done it. We had anointed the house. We you know prayed in every room. We commanded it for the name of Jesus Christ and God to vacate the premises, you know, and rebuked it. And whatever it was, wasn't going to leave. And we found out later that some things take a whole congregation of people to get rid of. Huh. But uh, so what began to happen the last week? So, in the last week. Okay, so she's she had come over here a few times trying to get rid of this thing. Then um taking it off. Anyway, um Sherry and, and Wendy were outside at the tree out there and Sherry's going, I really feel something out here by this tree. So to humor them, I went out and dug a hole. And I a friend of mine, he's uh search and rescue and I worked with him for years to doing search and rescue. You wait a minute, you dug a hole? I dug a they hole. said there's something strange by it. Uh, did they conclude beneath it, and is that how you started digging, or right. did you they, decide to dig? This is this is the thing. Here is the house is built on a knoll, and we found out that the place that was across the way was intended to be a mortuary. So that well, leads me to believe that in the pioneer days they used knolls as as like family burial sites. Well, Ken, what did you think you were digging for? I don't know. I was going to dig a hole to appease them. So that I could get some rest. This is nine o'clock at night in the dark with the light. I'm out there digging this hole. Uh, I'll yeah. tell you what. I'll call my friend up, have him come over with his dog that he uses for finding buried people or drowning victims. Yes. And if it hits on the hole, then we've got something. If it doesn't, okay, you know. So we go to bed that night. Get up in the morning. Sherry uh, was working at that time. She left before just before I got up. I got up, come downstairs, and I'm pouring a cup of coffee and look out the window, and the hole's filled in. What? Yeah. The hole's filled in. How much of a hole had you dug? I dug it like it's two and a half feet around by three feet deep. That's a big hole. Yeah, and it's filled back in. And so I called her. She called me on her lunch break and asked her if she filled the hole in, and I, she said no. And I talked to Wendy, and Wendy said no. And it's like, okay, and nobody filled the hole in. How to get filled in? So um, then I had... That was uh, like a Thursday night. Yeah. I, Harry was going to come over on Friday. Couldn't make it until the following day on Saturday. So he came over with his dog, which the dog did an alert out by the tree, but it was a real mild one, but it wasn't in the same spot. It was about three feet away. Uh, from where you had to... Uh, right, from where I had dug. It did a... Ken, did a... Ken hold on. Well, all right. Uh, uh, Ken, we're down to the last week, the last straw, I suppose, in a way, huh? Last straw, the last, yeah, the last, last couple week. of days there, anyway. Oh, uh, was absolutely the last straw. Um, all right, what happened? Okay, so uh, Saturday, I had my friend Harry come over with his dog and uh, work the property, you know, and it hit on that one spot by the tree. Right. Well, we went and put him in the truck, and we walked through the house, and Harry's got a digital camera, and he took some shots and stuff like that, see if anything happened to come up. Right. But um, he goes, well, tell you what, he goes, why don't we take take her down to the basement and see what happens down there. T- take the dog? Yes. Uh-huh, okay. So you go down in this basement, and when you, you take, go down these stairs, and you turn right at the bottom, and it opens up. It's an unfinished basement. It's all dirt floor. But somebody put, like, plywood up on the right side that goes down and angles over, making a room, like an old storage room or something. Right. And he opened up the door to that and went in there with the dog, and that dog literally turned inside out. It did not want anything to do with that room. Oh. I mean, just I've, I've seen dogs react doing death alerts, and this was like a major one. Death um, alert. Yeah, that's what it's called. And uh, the dog, you know, we took it out and went upstairs, and it took like a week for, the, for his dog to calm down from that. He said the last time he seen the dog like that was when he had it in Turkey at the earthquake. Uh, did either one of you go back down to that room? Um, no. <laughs> Smart. And uh, because uh, I've seen my buddy, I've never seen him scared. And we've been in a lot of predicaments when we did search and rescue and stuff. And uh, I know him really well. And I, he had the look of terror on his face. That was enough for you. That was enough for me. So um, we went up and we talked for a while. We were going to get together that 
that Saturday night and uh, go out, uh, get away from the house, you know, mm -hmm. try and calm ourselves down. My kids were at my folks' for the weekend. And so we went, ended up going out that evening, and when we came back, um, I ran down to the store because Sherry goes, well, run down to the store, and we need this real quick, and i got something i got to do, and I come back up. She's in the basement. She's in the basement? She's in the basement, in that room with a shovel and a flashlight, going, I'm going to get you. Oh, my God. Oh, yes, that was my thoughts. I come down there, and she just freaks and goes running out of there. So we talk about this stuff, and... You know, I go. You gotta. You can't do this. You know. I mean, you had told her about the room and the dog and all the rest of it. She was there. When she, it oh, she was there. She, yeah. So she knew about all this. Right. Exactly. So she knew something was in that room or under. That right. Room. Or something's you know been there for some time, or that's where the power or whatever it is there that's coming from, or you know, I don't know. But whatever it is, it's bad. It's pure evil. It's death. So you find her with a shovel in her hand, saying she's going to get it. Yeah. God, Ken. So then what? So then what? Well, we go upstairs and we're talking. And it's like, you know, I'm trying to get a level head view of this thing, you know, and it's like, oh my God, you know, I mean, we, there's, you know, we got to do something about this, you know. And she says, we have to do something because somebody is going to get seriously injured or killed, is what she says. You know, and it's like, okay, so we go to bed that night. Now, the next morning, is when this happens. Well, actually, right after that is when I got upset after we had this talk, and I go, that's it. I go, all right, you, whatever you are, show yourself. I'm tired of this. We're going at it, you know. And I really got upset, and I was walking through the house ranting and raving that I wanted to see whatever it is, show yourself now. Nothing, you know. So we go to bed, get up in the morning, take a shower, go back into the, the bedroom there. I got the stereo in the rooms playing, Threw my sweats on and my slippers and T-shirt. You know, we're going to go downstairs. And and we hear this, you know, what I said last night, this thump, thump. I mean, heavy. I can go up and down the foot or the stairs. I weigh 180 pounds, and I don't even come close to making the sound that this thing was making. Huh. And I look at her, and it's like, Who, who's in the house? And so I turn, and I look out the window, because our driveway comes up and wraps around, and there's no cars there or nothing. And the dog's laying by the end of the bed on the floor, and I look at the dog, and the dog's head is just starting to turn sideways as it's looking through the doorway, you know, at what's coming up. And she barks at everything. And, and there's well, something big coming up. There's something coming up. And she's not saying a word. Just her head's just turning. And so I step over, and Sherry steps over, and here it comes up the stair. You know, whatever it is, it's, it's pure black, as black can be. I I mean, I've got a black snap on jacket and it was as black as that. What kind of shape? Like as shaped like a human again, small? No, this is big. This is this like is six big. foot two. Oh. Bigger than me. I'm oh. five eight and a half and I'm looking up at this thing and it's oh. got this enormous head and then this body. But you can't see like arms or legs. But you can make out the shape of this enormous head that comes down. And then this body comes out from it that goes down to the floor, but doesn't touch the floor. Oh my God! And and it's like its head's tipped down, like it's looking at the floor where it's going, and it comes gets up like the stairs in, and you know, and you got to where the platform goes all the way around that you walk on, and it just starts rotating towards me as it you know rotates to the right, and I'm standing there looking at this thing. Not on feet, though, just rotating in yeah, the air. Yeah, just rotating. In the air. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the dog, and the dog's look, you know, looking at it, and it's like, you know, the dog's saying, like, well, screw me, you know, and, and Sherry just drops to her knees, and I just, there's just, the thought going through my mind is if this thing looks up, I'm done. I'm dead. This thing is coming. This is, has an agenda. It is right now. It has decided that it is going to do some damage. And it starts coming towards us. And it's just like, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Alien, where there's a part in the film where it comes at the one girl in the spaceship, and it's just like in slow motion. As yes. it comes to her, she's just freaked out. That's the way this thing was coming, you know, like there was nothing I could do, and it was going to have me. And as it came towards me, it got just about to the door, and it just turned to the right and with a blur, gone, blink. And I'm, she 
just screams out, did you see that? And I'm like, hell yes, did you see the size of the head on this thing? And I run to the door, and I look out expecting to see this thing right there, but there's nothing. All the doors are shut. Mm. You know, There's no light in the hallway except for the light that's coming from our room, which is just the light through the windows. The you know, I'm just speculating, Ken, but it sounds like when your wife was downstairs with that shovel in that room, it knew it had been found. Yeah. That's... Do you think that could be right? I very well think that could be right. And whatever is there does not want to be disturbed. I wouldn't disturb it for anything. Um, but one more time, if you don't mind, may I speak to Sherry? Sure. Okay. Appreciate that. Hello. Hi, Sherry. Hi. Uh, everything you said so far correct? Absolutely. Sherry, um, could you tell me what took you down to that room with a shovel in your hand. Can you remember what went through your head to get there? Yes. I, I was so fed up with all the stress of it, and I just wanted it to be gone. And I believed that whatever was in the house was probably buried down there because of the way the dog acted. Right. This dog is like 99% on. And, uh, so you were just you were fed up. I was fed up. I just I wanted released from it. And I didn't care what what it took to get rid of it. You were going to dig it up. I was going to dig it up. The only thing is, is that there's concrete under that gravel, and the shovel went and go through it. So. So you were trying uh, when Ken came down. Yes. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, wow, Sherry. Uh, the being that Ken just described that came up the steps. Uh huh. That's exactly what I saw. We've drawn pictures of it, and that's exactly what we saw. And we, it was so unusual. I was so happy because it's shown itself to me before, but it's never shown it to two people at the same time. So it was a relief to you that he finally saw it. Saw it. it. He was no longer a skeptic. Whew. Uh. All right, I just I sort of wanted to understand what was going through your mind that took you down there with a shovel. That's pretty radical stuff. Oh, I know. But if you'd been through all that, you would have probably done the same thing. All right, uh, I, I agree. Uh, thanks for talking to me, Sherry, and put Ken one on one last time. Okay. Hello? Okay, so uh, at this point, now you've both uh, seen this thing. You, Your skepticism, obviously, is long gone. Oh, yeah, that just that already made it out of the house. <laughs> so at what point did you two say, that's it? That must have been the point. Well, this, this is... Anyway, um, so I... That was later... Well, actually, the next day, or that, later that night, that, that was it. Um... Because I look out out there and there was no nothing there, and I turn around and she's backpedaling towards the windows, you know, right? Trying to find some security, get her back up against something, and I, you know, run in there and I grab her, come on, and I look out the door and it's clear still, and it's like, come on, Chewie, and down the stairs we went, and we ran out of the house. So we're standing out there in the driveway, just trembling, shaking, and I'm like, oh, my wallet, and my keys, they're on the dresser in the bedroom, great, you know, that means I got to go back in the house. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so we just kind of hung out there for a little bit and went back in. And normal. It was like nothing going on, you know. There were photographs taken, and you've got a photograph of some kind of creature, don't you? Yes, I have. There are several in the picture. Several? Hum yes, there's... Um, yeah, there's several that look like monsters, and then there's a couple that look like demons and a human-looking guy that's looking over. It looks like a tombstone. A tombstone. Uh, in order to get me these uh, photographs, you don't have a, comp a scanner on I your computer. I don't here at home. No, I have to go to a friend's. So you could go to a friend's and get these scanned and send them to me? Yes, I could. Um, you're the hell out of that house now. Um, Although you may not be done with this thing or it with you, I guess. Right, right. We've had some episodes since we've left there. Do you want an investigation? Do you want a, a some sort of... A, it sounds to me like some sort of college or a paranormal investigation team should be in that house, or maybe not, maybe with you, but certainly somebody should go look at that that little storage area in the dirt basement. Yeah, that's see, that's that's the whole thing. You know, since we left the house, it kind of made it to where the landlord's kind of back in control. You know, 
and it's he doesn't really believe us. He doesn't believe you? No, no. And yet he probably knows the history of somebody else who's run out of that house a long That's time ago, right? Exactly. And still he, well, of course, I guess the landlord probably wouldn't want to. Uh, do you know whether anybody new is there now? No, no. Right now he's in the process of laying new carpet and painting. And in fact, I have to go there tomorrow. I still have a two-car garage that's set off from the house there that I have a bunch of parts in and a couple cars to move because we left the house two weeks before Thanksgiving and we're just now getting to the end of getting stuff from there. That's how bad it was. My God. That to go back there, um, the day, that night after we'd seen it and I took the photos that night because there was just this ball activity of like little plasma balls and stuff going through the house. Right. And we went to bed that night and the activity moved from downstairs up to our room. And Sherry went to sleep at like 11.30, and I laid there till 3.30 watching this stuff. And I go, i got to go to sleep. And I'm looking, it's like, oh, almost 4 o'clock, and so i got to get up and go to work. So I lay in there on my side, and I close my eyes, and the next thing I know, the comforter is just sucked around me, and I'm rolled over flat on my back like I, I'm in a mummy bag, you know, one of them zip-up sleeping bags that you can't hardly move in. Right. And... I don't know what it is because I can't see it. It's on top of me, and it's pushing all the air out of my lungs I mean, to where I can't breathe, and I'm struggling, and I, I say Sherry's name, and like, Sherry, with as hard as I can trying to get her name out, and, you know, I'm trying to look at her, and she opens up her eyes, and she looks, and I said her name again, and she kind of looks at me like, what? You know, and I was able to say it one more time, and she sat up, and then it quit. This thing was trying to kill you. That's what I think. I felt like it was like partially into my body. It was pushing me down in the mattress. I mean, I was being pushed into the mattress. And it, like it was it was trying to suffocate me or kill me. Right there, she would have woke up in the morning and thought I died in my sleep. So in your opinion, uh, the landlord isn't, wouldn't have a thing to do with any sort of investigation of this house? I really highly doubt it. Uh, do you think? Do you feel like you should be talking to the people who are going to next rent it uh, and warning them? I very well probably will. Um, you know, we we would discuss this that that could end us in some type of lawsuit or something like that. But you're I, you're right. To have somebody go through what we went through, I don't want to see that because whatever is there is evil. How convinced are you that whatever it is may have followed you and be with you now? Um, because when we moved from there to the other house we were at, we had several incidents that happened there, and. Then it managed to calm down, and we got the house that we're in now. And we had been moving stuff in here. I had, my kids were staying the night at their friend's house over by the old place, and uh, we were here alone the first night that we uh, first night alone in the house here. And we'd went to bed, and like Sherry had told you earlier, she rolled was laying there in bed, and she like literally jumped on top of me. You know, she goes, "I'm scared." And I hear this, uh, 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 that this echoing, like, kind of in a dimension, but not the one that we're in, like in a tunnel, you know, like if somebody off in the distance, yeah. going from the bed out the doorway of the bedroom. And I just thought, like, you bastard, you know, this here's this evil laugh, like, I found you. Yeah. You know, guess what? And But that's the last thing that's happened here. <sighs> it's It's really odd. And yeah, we've been going to church every week, and you know, it's. I this is one last question I want to ask, okay. and again, you don't have to answer it. But have either one of you considered the possibility that whatever this is, is coming from one of you? You know, we we were thinking about that, but neither one of us ever had any experiences like this until being in that house, ever. Hi, hi, hi. Have you talked to any other media about this? No, I have not. Other than the one guy that he's wrote four books, and he gave me a lot of really good information that's really helped to protect us. But you haven't done any other interviews until now? No. Okay. Um, what I want to do is stay in touch with you and, uh, and Sherry, and uh, I want to know how this comes out. All right? Yes, yes, I would uh, be happy to let you know how it comes out. <laughs> And I'll, I hope well, and I wish you both well. I'll get those pictures back to you. You can study those for a while. Uh, and put them on the website with your uh, permission. 
Okay. Well, I'll discuss that. All right. All righty. Ken, thank you. Thank you. You good have night. a nice night. Say good night to Sherry.